Welcome everybody to the seasonal diet, eating what our ancestors ate, when they ate it, like we were evolved to do. Today we're speaking about some holiday dishes in uh, the north of Europe. So for the last um, 1,000 to 1,500 years we call it Christmas dinner, uh, but before that in pagan times we called it Yule or the solstice, I think the Celts call it Alban. Artha something, uh, but but yeah, either way, at this time of year, it was one of the most big and celebrated times of year, no matter what religion we had at the time, and there was always a feast as a part of it. So uh, this has lasted until today, with relatively little change in the diet, too. Almost every holiday meal, um, any winter dish in the north of Europe, actually, is made with either pork or sometimes lamb. Um, uh, the traditional North Pagan Yule, it was always a, a pig or a boar that they would be offering, and they would boil it, actually. That was the traditional um, uh, diet, but lots of different recipes all over the northern Europe, still lasting until today. Even little candies around Christmas time that we see about this uh, pork in the midwinter. And... This is for very good reason what I'm speaking about in this video. Pigs, and we can also include sheep in here, but mostly pigs, are the two animals that are most easy to maintain through the winter. Um, uh, someone that lives in rural communities, and I know a lot of you guys are homesteaders and keep animals yourself, you know how much food, water, and resources something like a cow takes, or a horse takes, which we used to eat a lot more uh, back in time than we do today. Um, other livestock like goats and chickens, they're easier to take care of, but you need to put in a bit more effort in the winter to keep them warm. Um, uh, most other livestock is the same, they take a little bit of work in the winter. Pigs are so easy, <laughs> I come from a family of uh, pork farmers, and pigs eat anything, and they take the cold very, very well in the winter. Sheep also to a certain extent, but mostly pigs, you can just kind of leave them there and, and they, they take care of themselves over the winter, just feed them some crap. And this is why in all these ancient records of a fall festival or pagan ritual in, in the fall, like in the harvest time, it's almost always cattle or horses that are sacrificed. That's why our fall dishes um, um, tend to have like beef and the winter dishes tend to be more pork. And it makes perfect sense, uh, say I was a farmer and I maybe had 10 of each animal equally. Uh, we don't have the hay and other resources to feed them all through the winter. So I would kill off maybe five or six of the cattle, even more of the goats or horses, and I'd cook them in the feast at the harvest time because they would use the most resources and work in the difficult winter. I might even sell a couple of them and use that money to buy some new calves in the spring, so pay someone else to, to take care of the animals in the winter and I can still benefit from them. That's on the small scale, but you get the point. Wealthy landowners back then had dozens of cattle and a village to feed, so it would the same process applies, but I would still keep my pigs uh, through the winter and probably most of the sheep because they are much easier to take care of and uh, during the cold and, and they are a stable food source during this time. It just makes sense economically really. That's why historical records, uh, we usually have a boar or sheep for the major feasts during the winter. And that's why most of our winter and holiday dishes today are pork or lamb. But it all depends on where you're from too. Do you guys have any different winter dishes that are popular in your country? Write them below in the comments. We would love to hear.